Hello, everyone. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby here with the production designers for Avatar The Way of Water, Dylan Cole and Ben Proctor. And you both have, I would say, a pretty long history of designing for these very visual effects heavy films. Uh, Avatar is probably the king of visual effects heavy films. So I am curious, what is it about this realm designing for that area that really connects with you and speaks to you? Um, for, for me, it's about world building. You know, it's, it's you know, d doing a, a, a contemporary thriller while I admire the work into it just doesn't interest me as much. Like, I, I want to create a place where where people want to go or, or is interested or never seen before. You know, it's, it's about creating that escapism, that that awe and wonder. You know, I, I grew up on those type of movies and I, you know, it's especially something like Star Wars or something like that, where I like I, I want to go to these places. And so to take something like that but then do it on so much more of like a realistic grounded level is, um, you know, is, is, is incredibly fulfilling. Yeah. That's the distinction between uh, the way Jim approaches these, these kind of, you know, it, it is a fantasy film. You could argue that it's a fantasy film. Right. Um, and yet there is so much reality that grounds it in terms of every aspect of how it's made. Right. I mean, I'm, we, I'm not going to talk so much about the production side, but you're probably well aware of, of how much performance capture we do and how, how the lengths we go to make sure that there's not one stitch of, of basically keyframe character animation in it. And that involves doing underwater motion capture and all these, all these amazing processes that we've had to basically invent for the films, but that the, the same principles apply to every aspect of design that we do, right? Um, you know, I think on a, on a lot of movies, even movies that I've worked on, it's okay for things to just look cool and, and kind of make sense, right? Uh, but when you're doing design for gym, whether it's a technical design or designing a creature or, or even a piece of architecture in Dylan's case that is, you know, has beautiful shapes, but has to, to hold up to the monsoon season on Pandora. Do we, is there a scene set in the monsoon season? No, there isn't. But Jim is thinking about that and bringing up stuff like that all the time in, in, in our meetings. And so he's really trained us uh, to a whole mindset of design that is very, very influenced by reality. Uh, but at the same time, of course, serves the story um, and has an emotional impact because we use we use reality as a creative inspiration in, in addition to a, a sort of technical limit. So it's fantasy within limits, I think, is maybe a, a certain Jim Cameron school of design that we've really embraced. Hmm. Well, when you are sort of designing one of these virtual, you know, fantastical lands on Pandora, how much, if any of it, is created? Do you, do you go to actual objects? Are you making models, or does it all happen digitally for you? Well, I mean, it's 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 all design. So it's you know, it, it starts off with you know, sometimes it's a pencil sketch, sometimes it's a digital three D model sketch. But um, you know, we it 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 it's, it definitely starts off with the design in the art department. That and and as Ben said, we we pull from everywhere and i mean like pandora is ultimately a, a a metaphor for earth and so we we start there with the reality i mean you can't beat nature is the best designer <laughs> ever and so um so so we start with a lot of metaphors from from things that we recognize on earth so for example you know the the, the whole reef in the lagoon was sort of bora bora on steroids it's like okay let's <laughs> let's start there that's that's that <laughs> that's the beginning and then so you know we knew we wanted coral you wanted to relate to coral as coral relate to fish as fish it can't be too alien but we take that and then expand upon it and make the the wondrous you know Pandora version of it. So, um, you know, we we would have some touchstones of 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 stuff being recognizable and and, and relatable, but then you know uh, take it to the tenth degree as much as we could. Yeah. In terms of re reality, I mean, we build a lot of stuff for these movies. Right? Yeah. That's a, a big part of how how we infuse it with that reality. I mean, Dylan, Dylan uh, built a sixteen foot model of of the Sully Marui at, at Reef Village and Dill, I guess I should let you talk about yeah that. no no I, I I think I lost track of what the question was <laughs> and then so sorry to, to answer your question so it all started there but then as far as what, what we actually built um you know for, uh, what you know for for the Mekaina village once we had a design for the Sully Marui we um you know we to to test our design we we, we took it to to what a workshop and they had a team of master weavers literally weave this Marui with real flax wow. fibers with real bent cane and and we made this thing for real and and while it was not um shot on as a practical miniature it was heavily scanned and photographed and served as the basis for for the digital models that that what it worked uh, that that what a digital used in the final visual effects and for some of the other water sequences you know as ben said it was all as much as possible done in performance capture so we might design some fantastic coral alien set but we needed hard contact points for the actors to um, to interact with in the tank and to serve the technical needs of the 
of the performance capture, you know, the, the performance capture cameras need to see the markers. And so we can't have big bulky sets. So our, um, you know, sometimes it, it, our, our practical builds are as small as possible for that visible, for, for that visibility. But a lot of times it's, you know, speed rail or underground coral sculpt, I mean, underwater coral sculptures. And some are foam, some are metal, some are, you know, it, it depends on, on the exact needs of the scene, but but we would, um, you know, build quite elaborate underwater sets for these um, performers to use. And on the live action side, sorry, sorry to interrupt, on the live action mm -hmm. side, we build a ton of finished sets too, right? Um, so Dylan, Dylan had a whole bunch yeah. of beautifully made natural sets that had real greens and gorgeous, some of the best mm -hmm. rock work I've ever seen any any art department produce. Absolutely. Really gorgeous. Um, and uh, and of course we put those things in in water tanks and then I, you know I had I had decks of the sea dragon that had to be angled and put into water tanks and that we had wave machines that are pushing water up against those things um, and uh, not to mention cockpits of vehicles that I had to flood practically so the art directors had to like re-engineer canopies and things at the last minute and then all kinds of amazing special effects work done down in New Zealand for that and then there's just just high finished sets just just you know sci-fi interiors right those those are not cheap to produce and those, we did a ton of them um so so the footprint of live action and and of just basically how reality infuses into these movies is it's it's massive and it's really what makes it feel different i think when people people watch the movie it's not just the the beautiful cg lighting or the fact that it's in stereo that makes it feel real it's it's all of the, the discipline design that jim forces us to do and that we embrace and it's also uh the, the way that reality is built into the process of making the film yeah because it is a live action movie that has a lot of visual effects it's not an animated movie and and and, and that distinction is very important yeah well i think it you know you get that across because it feels like such a living world you know to to your point you know these things survive a monsoon season that you're not seeing i remember yeah. uh you know watching one scene by the reef and it the title card comes up the three brothers for those stone structures i was like oh what's that that's not part of the story i want to know more about the three brothers how much how much story is there how much lore is there that you created that's not even seen on on screen well i mean jim went away and wrote i think about 1500 pages of notes um <laughs> after he was you know <laughs> <laughs> busy exploring like the, single space the, the Marianaris <laughs> trench he, he went and then wrote 1500 pages of notes for the sequels and so he needed to figure out the world himself and and and, and that's where a lot of that lore came from and so I, I think there's power in 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 in, in exactly what you said where, where you imply like there's culture and history there that that those are called the three brothers rocks and it's 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 less important that people know exactly what it means just know that it has meaning and and of course the obvious metaphor is of course the it's 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 a big story about brothers right and so you know to to have that um metaphor with uh you know uh Loak and Natam and of course Loak and Piacon and that you know Loak and Piacon meet and hang out at Three Brothers Rocks and so it, you know you 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 get that that's probably an old Met Kayina name for those rocks um yeah. but yeah I mean, everyone always asks, you know, what, what have you been doing for so long? How come it took you so long, right? I'm surprised you haven't asked yet. People love to <laughs> um, But part of the answer is that, we, you know, we haven't, you know, it's like, oh, you came up with one movie. Good job in however many years, right? But that's not what we've been doing. I mean, it, it is, of course. But um, I think that the Jim, Jim, like to the, to the what, what Dylan was talking about, these notes, Jim, Jim has approached this as this is the expansion of the Pandoran universe and every potential that, is, that these storylines and that this conflict of civilizations has to offer, right? And so uh, we went through a long exploratory process visually with him as he was developing the story with his, his writing team. Um, and the story, you know, of course, these movies are, are wonderful, you know, complete stories unto themselves, but there is an overall arc. There is a sort of a saga that this is part of, and it's all been planned. It's all written. You know, we've done designs all across Pandora. Dylan is going to take his world into different biomes that we've never seen. Just as we've gone to the water, there's a lot of other places to go to, right? Um, so there's always something more around around the corner. And for for you know, as a world building assignment for us and for all of our artists and for, for everyone working there, for it's just it couldn't be more fun to invent things. And and one little anecdotal thing on my side is, you know, I like to think of myself as kind of the actor that plays the bad guy in the sense of design, right? I mean, you know, and it, just because you're playing the bad guy doesn't mean you, you, you know, you can, you can treat it lightly or, or not invest yourself in it. I mean, it, all of my artists and I have thought about, you know, how does the RDA think of itself? How do they look at it? How does it look at itself, right? So there's little bits of kind of RDA propaganda that's like maybe like to your point, tiny and, and stuck in the different corners of the, uh, you know, of the shots that, that is in some cases may not be legible, but for us, it adds to this this world building feeling of reality that there's just more poking around every corner. 
Well, yeah, and, and just just to jump on what what Ben was saying is that you know in in order to design this movie, we had to know where we were going, and so you know we we needed to to know that what what are the other cultures? You know, in, in every in every film, we get to meet new cultures. It's not just yay, we met the Mekayan and we're done. It's like no, no, every single movie advances and expands the world. So, so you know, the, the, it's it's it was always about thinking of Pandora as Earth, and you know, it's not like the single biome planet that 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 we see in other films. It's it really is a planet that is as diverse, or moon, I should say, as diverse as Earth. And so we see all those different biomes and how every single culture adapts to those. And and then, you know, besides that, on a, you know, uh, scientific, you know, um, anthropological level, we, we, we then need to figure out how that serves the story. And so that's why it was also important for Jim to figure out the story for the whole saga so that, you know, we can um, know where we're going, you know, thematically and visually. Is that ever a daunting process, though, for to design a, this mega? It's really kind of like three projects in one almost. I feel like I'm not a designer, but if I was tasked with this, I would be off, you know, like, hey, I designed something for people that live in a desert that doesn't exist. And they'd be like, no, come back to this second movie. Yep. <laughs> is that ever? No, it, it, it's, it, it, it is incredibly daunting. But in the early days, it was kind of fun just because there was so much to do that you never got stuck doing one thing like, okay i'm gonna like kind of hit on everything so it's kind of like you 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 just do a pass on everything you know okay let's see how that looks now let's get some reviews okay now let's kind of do a whole another pass and so you know we th there was so much to do that it 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 it, it kept it new you know because you weren't just iterating on one thing you know we had to figure out so much and so um yeah but i mean we, we have a pretty good idea where we're going with everything but it's um it it, it was it was daunting but super excited at the same time because there was so much and, and and you know that it's never just you know cool looking stuff just because it, it always serves a story or it serves a metaphor or it serves a theme and 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 that's why we, we know we're in good hands with jim because those those qualities always always come through i mean i'm sure the people that go on real world ex exploration missions with jim probably have a good time because he's a great he's a great host and a great leader to explore things and discover things together and i, I would say that the design process has been, especially in the early phase, it was fun because it was really like you, we were discovering it with him. You know, Jim, Jim, he knows what he wants up to a point. I mean, if he describes it as sort of these, he's got like a blurry photo of the thing in his mind. He vaguely knows what he wants, uh, but it requires all the efforts of, of the art department in that interactive process with him to, to kind of pull that image into focus. And so he's discovering it at the same time we are. Uh, and, and, and he's just as excited as we are, you know, he like, like, you know, for, I can't tell you how many times he, he would chuckle, you know, because he suddenly enjoyed something that we'd come up with and, 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 you know, you're on the right track and, and, and he gets a feeling of confidence. And there were times when we would design stuff, um, you know, at sort of out of the blue, just out of inspiration. Cause we did have like a chunk of time to do load and we've got all our homework done. We could do some extra stuff too. Um, and every once in a while, those things end up written into the script, which is kind of the designer's. I'm sure Dylan, you agree. The designer's dream, right, is that you come up with a visual that's so compelling that it somehow has has an effect on the story. So uh, it was really great. Yeah, because we, we were really privileged to be there in the early days when Jim was working with the team of writers, you know, writing all the scripts. And and so there there was a, a really wonderful feedback loop, you know, where, you know, sometimes Jim would come up even like specifically, hey, I, I want to see some stuff for this because he might have been writing that scene or they, they were working something out. And then, um, you know, as, as as Ben said, you know, the ultimate compliment is seeing some, you know, stuff written in that 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 you may have designed. And and, and Jim does, you know, you know, he hires us because he wants us to design stuff. He doesn't want to do everything himself. Like he has these brilliant ideas, and you know, it, version one is always giving exactly what he asked for, of course. And then, as Ben said, we get to go off and explore them. And and sometimes, you know, th those lead to new and uh, and unexpected things that um, that that he might hybridize with his original idea or he might completely, you know, change, uh, change tack. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He will say, it's not what I imagined, but I like it. I mean, literally. Yeah. Yeah. So it's great. <laughs> yeah. You, you mentioned before about how you, you know, you actually wove together those uh, sets for the, the um, seaside clan. And I'm curious because it's, it's also, as you said, a fantastical world, an alien world that we've never seen before. So what is that balancing act like of how do you make something that seems real, like it can actually exist, but how do you also make it unreal, something we haven't seen? Yeah, well, one thing we always try and do and Jim encourages us is to go too far, you know, find find that boundary. 
And so if if he feels like we haven't gone too far, even if he likes something, he still mm -hmm. wants to see the too far version just so that he's sure of where we are. Because, you know, you, you want to be on that edge. You know, if something's too alien and we're on some weird, you know, floaty blob planet that no one can relate to, then then, then, then what's the point, right? <laughs> you know, because <laughs> you know, one, one of the major themes of these films is 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 putting awareness back on Earth. And so if you can't identify elements that are familiar to you in the design, then, then that part isn't going to work. So a, a lot of times it's a reigning in process. Um, and, and, and it's just, you know, it's, it's thinking more in a National Geographic way than in a fantasy film design way. And so we're always, always looking at nature for inspiration in, in every single bit of detail. Is That's there a hard surface side? I was just going to say, you know, that, that, that we, we look at animals as, as gestures for vehicles sometimes because animals have, uh, number one, they've got the evolutionary advantage of they've been living in the water for a long time. They, they're they shaped the right way, right? They have the right gestures that make you, that evoke the water and, and, and actually allow things to function. Um, and of course, you know, we can't help but look at natural designs uh, and, and infer a bit of a personality or have a sort of a connection to it, right? And so when you infuse hard surface designs, vehicles or whatnot with, with animal references, it just, it makes them that much more emotional. It's, it, it ticks a neuron in the brain and kind of engages you. Yeah. Well, really quickly before I let you go, is there one really great design that you're proud of that made it into the movie that was really hard to get right? Uh, well, two quick ones. For one, just creature, the skimwing is my favorite by far because it's like, it's a giant flying fish and you stick this crocodilian <laughs> gharial head on it. Um, and which was funny because once we talked about putting that type of head and talked to him into it, he literally showed up with the skull of the thing. Oh yeah, I happen to have a skull of this. We're like, of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then my other is 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 just Mekaina Me Village, just just because that was far and away my my biggest challenge. And there's so much detail and culture and history literally woven into that that you um you know can't 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 help but be proud of that. Uh, on my side, it's absolutely the sea dragon. Um, which you know, I, I hope is is a successful design in, in the emotional ways I was just talking about. I and mean, it, it feels intimidating. It's like it is the, in fact the demon ship that the that the, the Navi referred to. Um, but in terms of just a a design puzzle uh, of having to figure out how it can be this Russian doll mothership that contains all these other vehicles and that all the launch systems and and the ergonomics of how people get into the vehicles and use little bridges and what happens when they you know the subs drop off um, and, and and tying all those. Those pragmatic elements of some, and, and in fact, just all those different designs all nested together, uh, which, which number one, is it just a fun challenge? Um, number two, makes it really real when you address those challenges with the right sort of thought process and think of it from an engineer's perspective. Uh, and number three, just creates this like ludicrous density of design. I mean, there's shots that have like half of my stuff <laughs> at one, one angle, you know, as, as the, as the you know, boats are skipping across the waves and you see like a crab suit doing something back on the sea dragon, all these stack shots. It's, it's so rich for me to see it all at once. So for me, definitely far and away, hardest thing and most satisfying thing. Hmm. Well, it's an incredibly rich film. So congratulations on your work there. Um, thank you for staying down with me. If you're watching at home, make sure you subscribe to Gold Derby. Keep up with us for the rest of the season. Ben, Dylan, thank you so much for chatting with me. Thank you, Sam. Our pleasure. Thank you.